Hey folks, so today we gotta talk about a chunk of body cam footage that was released last week by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department's official YouTube channel. And man, is it one for the books. We're gonna watch parts of it together in a little while, but let me truly set this up because as the years go on, I promise that this footage on YouTube is gonna become one of those videos where everybody's seen it or seen a clip of it and it's going to be edited and different parts or it's just going to be around for a very long time so i'm not necessarily proud of it but i've watched pretty much every police officer gets a dui body cam footage that's on youtube so there's like a couple genres in my head there's the Police officer gets pulled over and gets a DUI, and they always do the thing like, come on, man, just help me out. Well, it, it's not like it used to be, all right? They used to just give us a ride home. Just because I'm nine times over the legal limit doesn't mean that you can't just let me go and sleep in the woods. Please, please turn your body cam off. Please, can you please just turn your body cam off? They're like staring into the body cam while they're saying it. Is your body cam on? Can you please turn it off? And so that's one genre. Police officer gets a DUI. Like I said, I'm not necessarily proud that I've watched all of them. Probably a couple times, but I have. And then there's another genre on YouTube that I consider police officer gets caught on camera doing something. Most of the time it's off-duty. So I'll put off-duty police officer gets caught on camera doing something and then they're always just flabbergasted they got caught on camera doing the thing and watching them being told by another police officer it was all on camera and seeing their face just go sallow and melt into a guilty puddle is something and so the most maybe recent one that comes to mind from that genre is you've probably seen it all of these go viral and stay viral for a long time but there's a guy in his work truck with his dog and there's an off-duty police officer in front of him and the guy in the work truck is mad because the guy the off-duty police officer in front of him isn't turning at the light and then the guy in the work truck thinks he's texting so the guy in the work truck starts flipping off the guy in front of him he doesn't know it's a cop well the cop doesn't like that gets out of his car which if you never get out of your car in a road argument road rage situation as soon as you get out of your car you're the you're the one losing it it's it's you there's no just do don't do it so anyway but the cop gets out of his car and they get into it verbally for a little bit and the cop gets really mad and comes through the window and punches the guy but he has a camera and then so the police go to the off-duty police officer they find him in a parking lot a, a little bit later and they're going you hit him and the off-duty police officer goes oh he's saying i hit him and then, then the police officer goes it's all on camera and then you get to see the face go damn it and something about especially the dui something about losing so much over something so avoidable is just fascinating and then there's even another genre that i've spent probably an embarrassing amount of time on which is thieves getting caught and getting called out and probably the best channel for that is a channel called gas station encounters i'm sure a lot of you know about it and so those three genres I've watched almost all the videos and this chunk of footage, which is Officer Henry Chapman from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, gets brutally, embarrassingly caught attempting to steal $900 from the guy they're arresting. The guy they're, they're arresting is Mr. Moon. And so... Henry Chapman tries to steal the $900. Mr. Moon solves the case right there in front of him in real time. It's actually pretty impressive and brutally calls out Officer Chapman. 
And then it falls into that category of Officer Chapman's 49 years old. So he lost his career. He resigned a day later. He was charged with embezzlement. But he lost his career. You got to think that, that he lost probably his health benefits for his whole family. I'm sure they get pretty decent benefits as a police officer. And so the chances that that is the benefits for his family is pretty good. So imagine him, Chapman, going home after being caught on camera trying to steal $900. It's nothing. Getting caught, getting fired, getting charged with embezzlement. You go from having a career and a retirement pension and benefits and respect and security the feeling of taking care of your family, you have all of that one day, and then because you try to steal $900 cash, you get he gets to go home to his family and say, not only did I lose my career, but we don't have health benefits anymore, and I don't have a pension anymore. And that's why I end up watching these videos 20 times, because I'll, I'll do something that has zero effect on my life in the grand scheme of things, and it will eat me up for two days. I'll be sitting there. Think about thing, little things that you do, and you'll be sitting there, and I'll just hit you and just be like, oh, man, like I'll say something on an episode, or I'll, and it just, something so small can produce a full body wince when I think about it that the thought of having to go home and deal with this big of a mistake is just mind blowing. It really is. But let's let's talk about it. Okay, so a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer, a traffic cop on a motorcycle pulls over Mr. Moon for speeding. That's all it was. And when the motorcycle cop pulls over Mr. Moon for speeding, gets his license, he goes back, he runs his information on the computer on his motorcycle and realizes, oh, Mr. Moon has a warrant, but not with, I think it was a federal warrant. So the motorcycle cop couldn't see what it just said warrant. He didn't. And so the motorcycle cop's very respected in this whole ordeal, really comes off looking like a decent guy. But he goes up to Mr. Moon and goes, I stopped you for a traffic stop, but there's this warrant. I'll show you what it is, but we have to take take you in. Mr. Moon is very cooperative the whole time, but to assist in the arrest because the first officer that was there is just on a motorcycle. So you can't arrest someone and just have them back on the back of the motorcycle like Dumb and Dumber style. <laughs> Hits a pebble and the whole thing shakes. So... The motorcycle cop calls for an assisting officer and who responded to the call was Officer Henry Chapman. And I wonder, he probably never thought in a million years this will be the last call that I ever take. This will be a life-defining, life-changing moment. I'm going to go from having a job and a pension and benefits and the whole thing to being a disgraced thief. That's a hell of a... That's a hell of a character arc in 48 hours. But anyway, the first cop calls an assisting officer. Yeah, you know, I'm pulled over this guy. He's got a warrant. I'm on a motorcycle. You got to come. So then the Henry Chapman comes, and they're searching Mr. Moon just to make sure he doesn't have anything before they put him in the car. And he has eight around $8,000 cash on him in a rub, with a rubber band around it. And Mr. Moon notices that Henry, Officer Henry Chapman is acting weird towards the money pretty much immediately because Mr. Moon was in his girlfriend's car with his friend. And so as there and everybody's acting respectful, no one's fighting. I would guess that the arrest of warrant, whatever the warrant was for, wasn't all that big of a deal because Mr. Moon didn't seem all that alarmed. Like, all right, let's just go figure this out. And 
So everyone's just being respective. All right, let me get you searched. And then they pull out the money. They pull out the things in his pocket. And they're giving some things to the, the passenger in the car. Like, all right, he's got to go to jail. So you take this. You take this. And then Mr. Moon goes, can you give the money to, the, to my friend, the other guy? And Chapman... Officer Chapman, the guy that's going down in flames, goes, the cash is going with you. That's going to be with you. We're not going to give that to anyone else. I'm stay it's staying with you so you know we didn't take none and none will be missing. And so already, it's like, why not just give him the cash? Maybe that's procedure, but it, it seemed like he was improvising that decision. Uh, he wanted the cash to stay around. And so now the bundle of cash is on Officer Chapman, the guy that showed up in the police car to assist the arrest. It's sitting on his passenger, you know, up front in his passenger seat, just sitting on the seat. So then they put Mr. Moon in the back of the car and drive to the police station. As they get to the police station, they pull Mr. Moon out and they're in kind of the covered garage area of the police station and the s police sergeant happens to be there. Many things had to come together for this to blow up as bad as it did. And so the police sergeant is there. There's a female officer there that starts assisting in the rest. There's the original motorcycle cop that pulled over Mr. Moon in the first place on the motorcycle, and he's just kind of sitting there waiting for the whole thing to be done. And then it's Chapman, Officer Chapman, because his car is who transported Mr. Moon is there. And so they pull they pull um, Mr. Moon out again, search him again. They're about to bring him in and process him. And as they're searching him, and you can almost, I think, hear it on the body cam footage, the rubber band that was around the money, Mr. Moon goes, hey, I just heard my rubber band pop. Why did it, why, you know, what are you doing? And then he's noticing that Officer Chapman is doing some weird type of suspicious, like when a kid gets caught doing something, you're like, what are you doing? You think you're this, this slick, you think what you're doing is fooling anyone, but he, and so Mr. Moon, while he's sitting there handcuffed, being searched again, ready to go through processing, is going, he's, he's moving. He's, I heard I heard my cat, the, the rubber band being manipulated. And look at him. He's moving right now. He's moving. Look at his legs. And he's trying to get the attention. And the cops are talking about football. And what are you, a Florida Gators fan? And no one's really paying all that much attention to him saying, look, look at your, look at your fellow officer. He's, he's moving. He's, he's moving my cash right now. And then, um, Chapman, officer Chapman, like holds up the cash to give to the female officer, like oh, big money over here. And the female officer takes it and goes, okay, I'm going to count your money. And again, Mr. Moon is almost frantically going you don't check your and they're going no and we're going to count your money he goes i don't care about counting it check your your fellow officer is look at him he's moving his legs he's moving his legs right now he's doing it and this is the part think about being officer chapman so at some point probably very early on in the arrest when he saw that initial stack of cash he probably thought all right this guy's a drug dealer you know, probably maybe a fentanyl dealer. This cash is just going to go into some... You know what? Me taking a few hundreds off the top isn't going to change nothing. And probably making that decision was just this, yeah, I mean, it, 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 a couple hundreds, what's it going to do? And then once it gets to the point where the sergeant is staying, there's three or four officers standing around... And he thinks, I'm good. There's no way he's ever going to know. What's he going to say? The police stole it from him. Yeah, like anybody's going to believe him. <laughs> Sucker. And to all of a sudden be in the middle of taking the $900 bills, putting it in between his legs, moving it over and stuffing it into the pocket on his door during that process to be caught by the arrestee and to be loudly and constantly being called out for it, you really get to see 
Chapman's body and face go through something. I mean, think about that. All of the little micro expressions and the things his body... People have been doing life-ruining things, stupid, small things that ruin their entire life for as long as humans have been around. But in the grand scheme of things, only very recently as cameras have become what they become and small and now everybody's got a body cam and it's digital and it's easy to, it's footage is easily saved. Only recently can we watch the human face go through something like this? And I think that's one of the things I'm most satisfied. That's why when we get to watching this in a few, seeing the physiological changes in his body and posture and face and all the little expressions as his life starts to end, he's being... I mean, imagine, all right, I'm taking 900 bucks and then all of a sudden your sergeant, your boss is sitting there while the, while the, guy, the guy's calling you out. Look at him, he's doing it. And he was, he's in between his legs. And so he has to pretend everything is fine. Yeah, it just, I always look bizarre like this. And, and he'll keep holding his hands up like, look, I'm not doing anything. And then immediately put him back down. Yep, just digging in my crotch. I'm a crotch digger. Oh, no, look, I'm not doing it. I'm doing something again. And and as you can imagine, Mr. Moon, the arrestee, is his mind is blown. He goes, I can't believe you guys are doing me like this. You got to check your fellow officer. He's I heard the rubber band be manipulated. I saw him tuck the cash. I saw him weirdly moving in his legs. Every time the attention comes on me, he's doing other weird stuff with his hand. And enough can't be said about Mr. Moon and just how he, he handled this thing perfectly. What, how well he handled it, I would think you would think you can't get a job off of the body cam footage of you being arrested, but he handled this whole situation so perfectly that if I was in the area and was an employer, I would maybe call up Mr. Moon and say, hey, I know you were getting arrested and had a federal warrant, but Man, you carried yourself impressive. Want you cut? You need a job. And so anyway, Mr. Moon, in order to call this all out to the point where in a few minutes the officers actually do believe him just enough to check where the whole thing blows up and he gets caught, he had to I mean, he had to keep his tone right. He had to be excruciatingly polite. He's, he, while he's calling him out, he's apologizing to him. And it's hard to watch because it's like, Mr. Moon, you don't need to apologize. This dude. But there's a method to the madness because if it, it's he's apologizing to Officer Chapman while he's like, I don't mean to call you out, but I'm calling you out. I'm sorry for doing this, but you stole my money. And there's a lot of comments on the YouTube channel going i wish he would quit apologizing i wish this i was and it's like i know it's tough to listen to him apologizing to the cop that's stealing from him but every little thing that he did is why they didn't just brush him off immediately if he would have lost his temper and freaked out they would have just pushed his head onto the car all right get this guy out of here and chapman would have had his 900 bucks later sucker and it would have been over but because chapman kept it so polite and just spoke nothing but dead on facts the whole time they had to believe him and it really is that's part of the whole thing that's so fascinating about this chunk of footage is just how well mr moon how he was able to just nail every little moment perfectly that came up and that resulted in him so anyway so the female officer takes the chunk of cash and starts to count it and Mr. Moon doesn't even isn't even caring about counting it because he sees Chapman inside of his car taking the money and trying to get it hidden into the door. But it's in between his legs and he looks like he looks more guilty than I've ever seen anyone. And then she stops counting it. And and Moon is really just, can someone check him? You know, you need to check him. And the sergeant finally is coming over because all this commotion 
and they're trying to call Mr. Moon Cat. No one's stealing your money. If someone was stealing your money, it'd be a big problem. You know, calm down. We're going to count your money. There's, there's not going to be any money in this guy's car, which there was. You know, just calm down. And again, Moon is just handling the whole thing perfectly and st staying amped up, but keeping it polite and apologizing to everybody and just keeping it so they can't just brush him off like, all right, get him out of here. And it's going. And then at that point, after... Chapman gets it into his door. That's the point where now he gets out of his car like, hey, look, it's fine. Like, look at this. And it's a thieves think it's such a slick, great trick to when they steal something to stash it somewhere else. So then they can make a big show of like pulling their pockets out. Look, I don't have it on me. Hey, look at that. And Moon beautifully in the moment with everything happening while handcuffed had just the knowledge and the ability to say, listen, you guys, I know I don't have any kids, but my mom had foster care. And when somebody, if someone didn't do anything and is innocent and didn't steal the money, they're not going to pull out their pockets and pull out all their stuff and show you and everything. And he's right. I mean, it's right. From back talking about the gas station encounters um, channel, you see that all the time and it, it, it's like they think it's like this great like yeah this will really get him i'm gonna set it over here and then hey look at my pocket it's nothing and that happened to me once about 10 years ago i was at a comedy club which is just a bar right and i had set my bag on top of the bar and then a pair of nice sunglasses on top of the bag i didn't put them in the bag because i didn't have like a sunglasses case so i didn't want them to get scratched so I'm an idiot, but I set them on top of the bag, and then I went to the bathroom. I was gone for just a little bit, and I even as I was walking away, I was like, eh, I shouldn't leave. I should put the sunglasses in the bag, but I don't want to get them all scratched up in the the lenses. So I was like, yeah, it's probably fine. People are decent. And I come back, and my bag's sitting there, and there's no sunglasses. And so I, I was like, did someone? Did anyone see? I asked the bartender. I asked a couple people around, and then all of a sudden, people were like. They heard as the news was traveling, your sunglasses got stolen? And I was like, yeah, they're sitting right there. And I went to the bathroom and came back. And pretty much everyone was like, are you serious? Oh, man, that sucks. I'm sorry. And then just went back to like living their life and talking. And then there was one guy that all of a sudden, I've never talked to him, never seen him before. He came over, your sunglasses got stolen? I was like, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's talking my ear off about it. And he, was, he did it as a joke, but he still did it. He goes, look, I didn't do it. And he like showed me like jokingly the inside of his shirt pocket. I was sitting there as he's rambling on and on going, this dude definitely has my sunglasses somewhere in my pocket or in his pocket or somewhere. It's like, this dude definitely did it. And like I said, Mr. Mune beautifully in the moment as first of all we're gonna watch when chapman gets out of the car after he finally shoves it into the door his posture is so weird and pathetic and hilarious and it just goes back to i love that in this day and age we get to witness what going through something like this losing everything for nothing for doing such a stupid thing to lose everything to watch how the human body and the human face handle something like that is just fascinating so he's standing with this weirdly like bizarre posture just standing there like a loser <laughs> and and uh the sergeant the bo you know the boss of chapman he's trying to calm moon down no one's gonna steal your money no one and then Moon is pretty discouraged at this point because he's out of the car and he's saying, I wish you guys would have just searched him when he was doing the thing in between his legs. Now, who knows where it is? And then the female officer who had started to count it and stopped when Moon was calling him out viciously. And then so then she counts the money again and Moon's going, it's short. It's 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 short. It's like a thousand bucks short. And the female officer is going, OK, well, we will. Well, we'll document that you say that. And he goes, can, I don't know what the protocol. Moon is saying this. I don't know what the protocol is, but can you just 
can you just check your officer? I mean, it might be on him. And then that's again when he's like trying to pull out his pockets and he gets called out. It's like, that's what kids do when they definitely did it. And it's starting to raise. And during, while the female officer is counting the money, the sergeant is takes a phone call. So now he's kind of circling the whole thing on his phone. I don't know if it's regarding this case if he's talking about the federal warrant but now he's kind of not a part of it and then his phone call ends after a while while moon is still basically begging them like i don't want to inconvenience you guys i'm not resisting i'm not doing anything but can you please just check check this officer he took my money and then it's like raising again the volumes raising and then mr moon solves it and he says i don't know if it's in his door and when he says that, uh, which it is, I don't know if it's in his door. I'm sure, I mean, Chapman's face was melting. I'm sure his butt was pooping. It, it, to hear that, you really get to see a man's deepest, darkest fears come true. And so, it's building up again, this noise, and the arrestee is blaming. The, and just to put an end to it all, the sergeant, thinking there's no way in hell one of my officers stole this guy's money. So when he goes, I don't know if it's in his door, the sergeant with this energy of like, you know what, I'm putting an end to this. Come here. I'm going to show you in the door. And so think about Chapman. He knows that it's in the door. He knows his life is in the door, and it's about ready to be gone and so the sergeant like i said with the energy of like all right i'm gonna put an end to this come on come over here i'm gonna show you it's not in the door we'll get over this it'll be done and so as the sergeant is taking the final steps of officer chapman's life to show him the door he looks chapman looks through the window down at the cash that's in the door probably to see if it's being covered by a receipt or something and now in the now the sergeant is even closer and then they open the door and Chapman is standing there trying to block. So it's like, we're going to show you the door, but also I want to block the door and everything's on the line for him his whole life. And he just looks real crappy, you know, and he's trying to block the door. And then the, so the sergeant, again, thinking there's no way in hell that there actually is going to be money in the door confidently. All right, see? Can we be done with this now? Do you see any money in the door? And Moon goes, yes. I don't even want to touch it, but look, those are blue hundreds right there. Those are my blue hundreds right there. And as you can imagine, this hell just had devastating effects on Officer Chapman's entire soul and being. This is just worst case embarrassing scenario for Officer Chapman. So then they pull out the wad of hundreds that Chapman stole and Moon is going, thank you, thank you, that's my money, that's my money. And again, because Chapman's mind is racing and his butt is pooping and his back is probably sweating, he just blurts out, that ain't my money. <laughs> So it, that's just was it basically he admitted to he admitted to it right there because maybe the only chance he had was that, oh, yeah, that actually is my money. But in just the moment of terror, he just blurted out, that ain't my money. And one of my favorite parts of the whole body cam footage released is remember the respectful motorcycle cop that was the original speeding that pulled him over for speeding, but then hadn't been really a part of it since then. He had been off to the side watching and on the female cop's body cam, when they pull out the money and the sergeant's looking at it and Chapman goes, that ain't my money. The motorcycle cop knows what's really happening. And you just get to see him go like, damn Chapman brutal and he, he just walks out of the frame like i know this is gonna be a viral chunk of body cam forever so i'm just gonna get myself out of the shot sorry see you later chapman and and then chapman 
he has to go and sit at his desk while internal affairs and the sar and private chief and everybody come to interrogate him and everything. And so he's sitting in the dark at his desk and there's a picture of a kid on his desk. Maybe it's his niece or nephew, but I assume it's probably his. And it just goes back to imagine Chapman having to go home that night and explaining to his family we no longer have the health benefits. By the time you're 49 years old, there's probably some health thing you're dealing with that it's really nice to have health benefits, some medication you need or that your wife needs something. And it's just really unimaginable how, how do you move forward in life? Like I said, tiny little things will eat me up for two or three days and to picture Blowing it all for something so little just makes these fascinating. Okay, so that's my, great, 30 minutes in, and now we haven't even got to the footage yet. But let's now watch all of, just, we're just going to watch Chapman's face go through this just because it's amazing. All right, I'll see you upstairs. All right, folks, we're picking up. They got Mr. Moon here out of the car. The female officer is out of the car holding the money right here. Chapman right here has taken the nine $100 bills off this stack and he is trying to put it in between his legs and move it into the slot in the door. And Moon here just catches him. <laughs> so let's pick it up. So did you, did you see, he, Mr. Moon is asking, can you check him? I'm seeing, I'm seeing him move and it, something's going on between his legs and she comes up to, and he looks at her and in a nervous, terrified voice just says, we're good. And it almost makes the female officer look a little bit guilty and a part of the whole thing, but just watch Chapman's face. Most people will never go through what this man is going through right now. Look at his face. Have you seen anyone look more scared and guilty in your whole life? See, this is the sergeant over here. That guy right there is the sergeant. So that's his boss. I have a feeling that Chapman, look at that face. I have a feeling that Chapman is thinking this was a huge mistake. How did this go so bad? I just wanted to steal a little bit of money. Maybe he wanted to go gambling. Maybe he's in debt from something. But at this point, he's realizing this is going unbelievably bad. So he's just trying to. See, he's moving the cash slowly from in between his legs to his door. You can tell. The sergeant is trying to convince him. There's no way one of my officers stole your money. I think he just put it in the door. So he's looking down at the door. Is it covered? He's getting it in the door. All right, this is a great part. He stands up. This is where his posture is just beyond hilarious. Look how he's standing. 
All right, now we're gonna skip ahead to when he gets caught. All right, here's where it all goes down. The sergeant to put a stop to the whole thing says, all right, I'll open the door and Chapman's life is over. See, did you hear Moon? He goes, I don't know if it's in your door. And now the sergeant right here just goes, look, come here. Let, come here. Let me show you. And so Chapman knows it's over. He's about to show him the door where the money is. So now he's, Chapman's looking down. Look at him. Look at this. He jets in between. Puts his hand out. Now he's saying, I'm going to show you the door, but I would like to also block the door. Chapman. Do you see any I'm not even going to touch it. This blue one is right here. It's all the blue hunters are right there behind that receipt. Thank you. All that's my money. He didn't have it. This is your money? Yes, I heard him coming up. Thank you. Thank you. All that's that for money. That ain't my money. Well, you just admit it, Chapman. Charged with embezzlement down in epic flames. That's my money. That's my money right here. All right, just one more underrated moment from this whole thing. And so while Chapman is going down in flames over here, they're about ready to find the money. This was the motorcycle officer that was just respectful and cool the whole time. He's been standing here silent. Watch his face when he realized Chapman did do it. Right here. It's all the blue hunters are right there behind that receipt. Thank you. All oh, that's my money. He didn't have it. This is your money? Yes, I heard him coming it up. Thank you. Thank you. All that's my money. That's my money. That's my money right here. Look at that. He knows. All right. Later, everybody.